The book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 8, the Bible says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The illustration, manifestation of God's love is when he sent the Lord Jesus Christ so that we could be spared from that eternal damnation and we can have eternal life with him in heaven. But the price that was paid, so precious, it is the body, it is the precious blood of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. For us to have redemption, for us to have salvation. Praise be to God for that free gift of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, choir, sa atin pong special number. Please continue to pray for our choir as we uh, are preparing right now for our uh, yearly uh, Christmas cantata. And uh, also this coming October, we will have our Missions Emphasis Month. So samahan niyo po kami, our friends, our fellow brethren in the faith, ay samahan niyo po kami. Please uh, be with us uh, uh, in, in prayer uh, for the success of these uh, events. Salamat po ang ating naisin, ang mapapurihan, mabigyan ng glory ang Panginoon sa kanyang simbahan. Amen. So today, we will uh, talk about history. Okay? Very essential, very important in the life of a person, in the life of a nation. Maraming mga kailangan, a lot of information uh, is required to support future decisions, future direction, and we often look at some historical events that will lead us moving forward. Okay? Books are, for uh, hundreds of years, are the source of uh, this uh, historical information, whether it be yung mga tinatawag nating mga uh, information about a person, ng kanilang mga biography, uh, na, 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 na uh, record, we look at historical books. And when it comes to God Himself, His revelation to mankind, our means of understanding who our God is, the foundation of the world, we also look at a book. And that's none other than His Word, the Bible, His precious gift to mankind. Not just a historical book, but it is God Himself. The Bible says in the book of John, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so, this afternoon, we will have five major critical events na nangyari dito sa ating pong buhay, lalo pa doon sa unang panahon in the beginning, okay, that we can see in the pages of this book, the Bible. Sabi ko nga kanina in the introduction as well, that could help mankind on a personal basis okay, to answer the big and deepest question of life, especially the question, my purpose, what is my purpose here on earth? So we look at these events, we look at these historical accounts, so vital and so essential, so that we can also, also anticipate of that major event that will happen in the future that will point out to that great and blessed hope for a Christian. History. So we will cover a lot of ground this morning, this afternoon. I'm sorry. Before we continue, allow me to open us in a word of prayer. Let's all bow down our heads and close our eyes. Our most precious heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we thank you for this afternoon that we can freely sing songs for you. We can freely open your word. Thank you for the Bible. 
Thank you for your word, O oh God. Here we find who we are in front of you. Here we find who you are. Here we find the need for the Lord Jesus Christ. Here we find salvation. Here we find that blessed hope that one day we can be with the Lord Jesus Christ in all eternity. Here we find the many answers in the many to the many questions of life. Bless your people today, O God. May this be a blessing as well to our brethren, to our loved ones, to our uh, friends who are not yet saved. Please save, O God. Have mercy on them, O Lord. Speak to the hearts of your people. Speak to the hearts of our friends who are not yet saved, O God. Maintindihan po nawa na aming mga kaibigan ang pangangailangan ng kaligtasan na matatagpuan lamang that can only be found by faith to the finished work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the final, one and only, final sacrifice, the propitiation for our sins, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world, the perfect, holy sacrifice that could please the requirement of God. Forgive us of all our, all our unrighteousness, O Father. Help your preacher use my lips to declare your truths this afternoon. Save souls, challenge believers this afternoon. May you be glorified in our midst. In this we ask and pray, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, His people will say, Amen. So we're going to cover every major event that I do believe is so important and essential in the life of a believer, of a Christian, and also to a common person. And we will, have, we will look at that in just one sermon today. This is what we need to see. This is what we need to understand. This will give us the final answer to the many questions of life. And we praise and thank God that we can find those answers in the pages of the Bible. Very essential to know we can find it in this very book, the Word of God, the Bible. So there are five critical events we can say in the world history that we must know. Okay, we will not complicate things. But I hope and pray that at the end of this sermon, there is that level of understanding, may mga void sa ating uh, mind or sa ating heart that I pray could be filled in today. Once you have heard this simple and yet so profound message from God. We are going to look at these events and see their significance. Every event we will pose the question, what is the significance of this event? Not only significant in the context of a nation or the whole world, but to a, an individual person to every believer, believer, you and I, and to a, to an unsafe person, a common man, as the Bible pertains. And so today, the first is simply God created the heavens and the earth. Madaling maintindihan, we can often hear reading from the pages of the Bible about this truth, and yet so challenged, so criticized by the unbelieving world when it comes to the author, when it comes to who created this place, the universe that we can see, this, this, this world, this earth that we can see, we can touch, we can feel, and yet was revealed to us by God himself. The very first verse from the Bible is Genesis chapter 1 that says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So all historical event, historical account, the world history begins, make no mistake, not on any other event nating na nakita dito sa mundo, it all begins with God. And that should, that should 
set the tone of our belief system, especially believers of God, worshipers of the true and living God. Everything starts from God Himself. This is the most significant statement ever made. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. A statement that includes everything that exists. Everything that we see, everything that we feel, that we touch, we smell, we taste. It started from that perfect creation by a perfect God. Everything that exists today or has ever been created was created by God Himself. Sabi ko nga, kailangan pa ba natin itong ulit-ulitan here in the pulpit? Well, especially in this period of time that, we, that we're living in, this statement is the most criticized, challenged, ridiculed statement by the unbelieving world. The very statement of who created heaven and earth. At the beginning, God was already there. Hindi siya kasama doon sa bilog ng creation. He is outside. He is an uncreated being. So we cannot, hindi proper na impose natin ang question that who created God? He was there all along. He is the Alpha and the Omega as revealed to us by the scriptures. Before there was heaven and earth, God was already there. Everything starts, yung ating stand right now as a person, ano man yung ating mga belief system, it has to be founded, it is to be this very statement of who created us, who created what we have seen. Before all other topics or all other arguments that we can lay in front of us, there is that importance, important statement before everything has been created, God was already there. God was never created. God existed before there was a creation. That's what He revealed to us. That's what we believe. By faith. And mind you, it is only the exercise of faith that could, please, that could only please God. As the book of Hebrews says, it's impossible to please God, for without faith it is impossible to please, to please God. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is, and he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God created the universe, the earth, the plants, the animals, and his greatest creation, you and I, men, created in His very own image. With an intellect, with a brain that can operate with free will, that can analyze things, that can choose whatever He chooses, that can decide. That's an illustration of a loving God. Your existence right now, our existence right now, points out to an intelligent creator, to an intelligent being, a loving God who made us this way. Before everything else, God was already there. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 27, another revelation from God. His word, and God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Other Sam? Sorry. In your electric, electric fan. Thank you. In the image of God created he, him, male and female, God 
and, and female created he them. You see, in the very simplest revelation of God to us through his word, these verses, this statement was already there from the beginning of time as God revealed to us that his creation is a male and a female. Okay, there may be some discussion and argument about there, about this one. But if you're a believer right now, it, it, it eliminates a lot of confusion, a lot of complication when it regards, with, with regards to the existence of human being right now. God made it simple by revealing to us what he created is a male and a female. God created man. Us, humankind is a direct manifestation, sabi ko of an intelligent creator, a loving creator, divine. Ang pagkakakreate sa atin ng ating Diyos. We will be amazed at how the technology of the DNA has been revealed. No individual person ay may pagkakapareho. Even yung mga identical twins have different DNA. How specific God is when it comes to His creation of humans. God created man for His pleasure. God created man for His glory. God created man for his fellowship. My question to you right now, my friend, or our fellow believers, have you looked at this context, this simple, simple statement? Have you understand the very reason of God, of our God creating us, creating you right now? Now we could see at that context that our existence right now is to for the pleasure of God himself for the pleasure of our creator himself for the glory for his glory alone not ours but most of all for that sweet fellowship that we his creation can have a privilege a beautiful benefit for us to have a sweet fellowship with the one who created us have you looked at this simple illustration of who our God is and who we are in front of God? Now, the question is this, what is the significance of this critical event of God's creation in the world history? In our time, both in the times of those people who've gone before us and also to the other uh, generations to come, what is the is significance, the importance of this critical event. Simply, the manifestation, the illustration that it is God who is the author. The author and the director of history. Kaya ang sabi ko kanina before anything else, God was there. If you want to discuss and to, you want to look at the many arguments of life, you have to start with that statement. Everything starts from God. Everything starts with God. And when you look at His sovereignty, it comforts us to know that God is in control. That our God is a sovereign God. Walang mga nangyayari dito sa lupa that is not under the permissive will of our God. He began history and he's actively involved in the continuation of history until his great purpose and plan will be fulfilled. It shows us that God alone is in control of the universe and the direction of history. Continuation of history. It is God, our God, our almighty God, the author the maintainer and the controller of everything. And it also shows, because of this very simple statement, that humans are not God. Time and time again, from the fall of Lucifer, 
And to us human beings, we want to be God of ourselves. We don't want to subject ourselves to an authority. We, want, we do not want to subject ourselves to a creator. We don't want to subject ourselves to that being. So we don't, so we don't want to entertain. We often eliminate the thought. That's why this unbelieving world is trying to eliminate that thought that there is that God. There is our God who created everything. The end of the day, the verse says, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And later on, he created all living creature. And finally, he created the very special creation that he had. Humans, us. We are created beings being created by an uncreated God. Existing already before the foundation of the world. And so, having said that, we know, we believe, we stand at the very declaration of this statement that God is superior over us. He is, He was, He is, and He will always be superior to the very creation that He created. As created beings, we are responsible to our Creator. Hindi ibig sabihin that this world is trying to eliminate that authority at marami sila, they are in the majority, that they are right. God revealed Himself to us. He made Himself known unto us. To you, my friend, right now, kilala mo ba ang yung sarili in the context of who created you? And everything starts from God. Or you're still wrestling within yourself, within your thoughts, within your heart. And you're trying to get answers from the many who thinks the same with you. Who thinks, who wants to live this life without an authority, without the thought of having a creator, without the thought of submission of, 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 of a need of submission to a superior God. And so you want to be with them, to be with people, and you want to identify your existence, you want to define your very existence in the context of the worldview system. Or would you rather, in your own free will, Look at the account of this book. Talk to Him. Talk to God. And the Bible says, His hands are not short to hold you or to reach you. His ear, hindi sarado ang tainga ng ating Diyos upang hindi kanya marinig. And as He has promised, He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him you will find the answers to the many questions lingering in your mind about your very existence. To date, you know the very reason, the number one reason or cause of the many acts of suicide? Because of the question that is lingering in the heart of these people, that they are not significant, they have no purpose or meaning in this life. Wouldn't it be that you are so special right now because it is God who created you? But because He created you with a free will, with a free thought, with a mind that can think for, its, for himself or herself? Wouldn't it be considerate for you right now to look at the pages of the Bible? And to talk to him and to call upon him, he will hear you. He's listening to your many questions. He's listening to your frustrations, to your disappointments. And the Bible says, God himself says, he will give you peace. Would you be willing to know the one who created you? Would you be willing to know Him today? That's our prayer. Simple it may be 
it may seem that this first event is the creation of God, but it all points out to that very first event. It's all about our God. I hope you have now in, a, in that conclusion of who created you, the purpose of God for your creation, for creating you, for His pleasure, for His glory, and He wants to have fellowship with you. Alam mo, sabi ng salita ng Diyos, kaibigan, espesyal ang pagkakakreate sa atin, pagkakagawa sa atin ng Panginoon. Even the, num- the hairs are numbered. Kilala tayo ng Diyos. Kilala ka ng Diyos, kaibigan. God created the heavens and the earth. Second, man sinned. Again, critical. Essential, why? Because this event, ito yung nag-broke. It is the cause of that broken fellowship. It has caused us to be enemies to be enemies with our God who created us to have a, 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 a sweet fellowship with Him. with Him, But this event had occurred. In Genesis 3.11, And He said, Who told thee that thou wast naked, hast thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. Now, as we have known, as we have believed, and we have understand that God is superior over us, God makes the rules. Unfortunately, sad, sad to say, the unbelieving world, look at the rules of God. Yung parang pagpapahirap sa atin. No. It is for our good. It is for order. When you look at simple illustration of rules, look at like competitions. For example, a track and field or yung sprint, 100 meter sprint. One of the rules is that when they set their position, ready to run, they need to hear first that gunshot as a signal that they can start running. Therefore, kung sino yung nauna, yung false start, kung baga nawala pa yung shot ng gun, then that person, that uh, competitor, broke the rule that will cause him to be eliminated in the race. Imagine our world, our life, with no rules at all, with no standards at all. Imagine the chaos. Alam ng Diyos yung katatayuan natin, especially when we sin, and God put those rules and orders for our benefit, for our well-being. And one of that very first standard and rule that God gave to Adam is a command not to do something. At the end of the day, yun ang gustong gawin ng, ng unbelieving world, yung wala silang accountability or responsibility to do something to be obedient to a standard, to a rule. God's rules are not arbitrary, it's not illogical. God, in His love and His concern to us, He sets rules that are best for us as His creation. God knew what was best for Adam and commanded him not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But because we, are, we were created with a free thought, a free will, we can act freely. Man broke God's rules. Adam and Eve thought God was holding out on them. And so, that, 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 that was the illustration of the first lie coming from the father of lies, the devil himself. Influenced by the devil, Adam and Eve decided they think they knew better than God. They denied God's command and took matters into their own hands. And they broke the very, the only rule and commanded commandment by God not to do something. And so man sinned. Man disobeyed their creator. And by the way, sin was, is, and will always be an act of rebellion to our God. 
They rebelled against the rule of God. The actions of Adam and Eve brought sin into the world and that was the very reason there is death. In our lifetime, alam natin na different yung mga kaparaanan. It may be sickness, old age, accident, ang mga cause ng death. But, at the end of the day, it is the sin that was doon sa action ni Adam and Eve, it brought not only sin in this world, but also death, both in our physical body and in our spiritual condition. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. The same question, what is the significance of this account of this event in history, the fall of men, starting from Adam and Eve? The significance of this critical event in the world history, sin came into the world and sin continues to be in the world right now until the Lord Jesus Christ will come, judge the world, and change this old earth with new heaven and new earth. Will he will restore back the heavens and the earth to its original purpose. But until then, sin is prevalent in our life, in this life. And kung permit pa ng Panginoon na hindi pa siya babalik, two generations to come. Man was has today and will always have that corrupt heart against God, man will always rebel against God. And that rebellion continues until today. And what is the reminder to us? What is the proof to us of this event? Death. Death is still the reality of sin for every one birth is equivalent to one death. Reminder to us, pinapaalala sa atin ng pangyayari nito na nangyari kay Adam and Eve that flows until today and days to come. But you know what? This horrific event in the history of mankind, it didn't catch God by surprise. In the sovereign the almightiness of our God, His power in all-knowing God knew everything. We can see from the pages of the Bible, from the beginning of time, God knew that man would fall. This didn't throw God's eternal plan of, off track. World history was still in God's control. He had a plan to overcome the sin brought in this very world. Now, we know that we all live under the curse of sin. God declared that in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's the commonality between all of us human beings. That declaration of God and our condition in front of our God. And being a just and being a holy God, He requires penalty. He requires justice. He requires payment. And so Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death. And that event, that sin from the garden, in the garden, in the life of Adam and Eve, is a constant reminder to us that that event is still actively happening right now and even years to come. The event that will turn to another event Kala siguro natin parang doon na lang natapos. It all ends there. The plan has been perfected by God from the foundation of the world. And that leads us, points us to the stern event in our history. The Lord Jesus came. I hope and pray na sa simpleng sermon natin ngayon ito, kaibigan na unawaan mo the very reason why God Himself came here on earth. 
why the Lord Jesus Christ, God incarnate, bumaba sa lupa. Ganon kaseryoso ang naging condition natin when we sin against God. That it is God Himself planned everything, executed a perfect plan for you and I. How special we are in the sight of our God. In 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 to 4, For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also receive, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. But before God created the heavens and the earth, God already had a plan to conquer sin. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 to 21, the Bible says, Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Ano yung last times for you? Noong bumaba ang ating Panginoong Jesus first at pinulfil itong great plan foreordained before the foundation of the world. Verse 21, Who by Him do believe in God that raised Him up from the dead and gave Him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. God's perfect plan from the foundation of the world to conquer sin and to restore His people back in that sweet fellowship with Him, God's plan was none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came. God Himself gave Himself on the cross for our sins. It is God's plan of reconciliation. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's always and will always be the heartbeat of our God. He is not willing that any should perish. And so, He expresses love by giving us an opportunity to be spared from the very wrath of His justice, of being a holy and just God. A perfect plan so well formulated and then finally executed 2,000 years ago by none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. The perfect plan that covers even those who came before the Lord Jesus Christ. The illustration of that lamb healed by God Himself at yung balat to cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve. The illustration doon sa uh, sa, uh, sa uh, seed na mabubuo doon sa tiyan ng isang virgin mother in the person of Mary. The illustration of that precious blood na ipinahid doon sa doorpost upang hindi sila upang sila ay daanan lang ng angel of death in the time of Moses. The deliverance from the bondage of Egypt those are all illustration of the final deliverer, the final precious blood, the final lamb na pinulfil ng ating Panginoong Jesus. God had a plan to reconcile His holiness and His love and at the same time, He is holy and sin cannot exist in His presence but He is also a God who is so loving that He doesn't want any should perish. His justice and His holiness and His love was and is and has been reconciled in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. The wrath, the justice, the punishment has to be executed. It cannot be compromised otherwise. The holiness and the justice of God will be compromised if we will not believe that He will once again come and execute His wrath. But it's also a loving God who wants us to be restored in the original fellowship na kanyang purpose. And the way to reconcile that, by sending the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the very meaning, kaibigan, right now. Jesus coming here on earth is not just a historical event na gusto natin palaging entertain The thought that He died, He buried, and He resurrected. Once again, that event points out to our God. 
His plan was that a sinless Jesus would be the sacrifice for man's sins. We cannot fulfill the requirement of God. We are tainted with sins. And God being a holy God requires a perfect sacrifice that God himself offered in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. His plan is also that man, that man might live eternally with Him. Hindi lamang tayo nag, naging na-spare doon sa wrath. That's the very purpose of sending the Lord Jesus Christ. That's God's love so that we could be spared. But the result is also an eternity with Him. His resurrection means we'll also be resurrected. So what is the significance once again of this critical event in world history? It is God, not humans. Okay? Hindi tayo ang gumawa ng paraan. This will eliminate the thought that we humans are the ones who made a way for us to be reconciled. So remove that thought that you can go to heaven and you can be spared to hell because you are good, because you belong to a religion. No, it is God who made the way for us to be reconciled back to Him. God made a way for man to come out from under the curse and the bondage of sin. That's the significance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming here on earth. It is God Himself in human flesh gave Himself to overcome the sins of man. It is Jesus Christ who provides a way for man to receive forgiveness and be reconciled to their Creator. God created us, first event, Unfortunately, we sinned and we wronged God. And the penalty of a just and holy God is that damnation in hell. But praise be to God, Jesus came. And so that's the, expressions of, that's the expression of God's love. On, the, on this side is God's love. It is fulfilled, manifested in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. But how about that justice and the holiness of our God? who cannot be compromised. That will lead us to the fourth event, which is to come, in whom all Christians, you and I, are anticipating. That's the reason we preach to you, my friend. That's the reason we witness. That's the reason we send our preaching sermon to you. Because Jesus Christ will return. Today is the day so that you can experience God's love through the Lord Jesus Christ. That you can be reconciled to Him once and for all. That you can be spared from that eternal damnation because the Bible revealed to us that one day Jesus Christ will come. This time, not the expression of God's love, but the expression of God's holiness and justice. Because His second coming is for the execution of His justice, His wrath to the unbelieving world. Will you be the recipient of God's love and be with the Lord Jesus Christ in eternity? Or will you be the recipient of God's justice later on when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back? Choose you this day, my friend. Choose you this day. Jesus Christ has revealed to us by His very word, promised that He will return. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-17, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Them we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ, first and foremost, will fulfill His promise to those whom He saved, to those whom He redeemed. He will rapture the church. Kukuhanin niya ang lahat na nanampalataya sa Kanya, kakatagpuin doon sa ulap. And so, we will be with the Lord Jesus Christ in all eternity. The Bible not only records past world events, it also gives us a peek, a preview of what the future lies ahead of what the future world event. One day the Lord Jesus Christ will return, my friend. Will you be the one also 
will you be part of those whom he will rapture, whom he will meet in the air? Or you will be, or you, you, or will you be included in those who will remain and be judged by the great judge, the holy and just God, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, when he returns back? One day he will descend from heaven. One day an angel of the Lord will give a great victory shout. The trumpet of God will sound around the entire world. Jesus will take those who are his and bring them home. All those who died trusting him will be resurrected and join Jesus in the air with a perfect body, glorified body. All those Christians alive at the moment will join them and Jesus in the air. Every one of them will live in the presence and glory of God forever and ever. But those who are not His will be left out. Isa to sa ini-eliminate ng unbelieving world. They just want to believe to a loving God who says all are included, all are accepted in His kingdom, even without repentance or without trusting Jesus Christ as the only means of their salvation. They don't want to entertain the truth about a just and holy God who will one day come. But mind you, He revealed it to us. We want to believe also not only a loving God who saved us through the Lord Jesus Christ, we also believe the holiness and the justice of God also through the Lord Jesus Christ who will come, come back but this time, not as a lamb, but as a judge. Those who are not His will be left out. They will not join in with those who are with Jesus Christ. Revelations 20.15 says, And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Those who have not accepted Jesus Christ will dwell forever in a place called hell or the lake of fire. So what is the significance, once again, when we test this event of the Lord Jesus Christ coming back? What is the significance of this critical event in world history? The world that we are living in right now, it has a definite end. It is temporary. What's eternal, what's permanent? Is a Christian's blessed hope and yung ina-anticipate ng tunay na mana ng palataya, that eternal life, in that eternal place, with the eternal being, eternal life, eternal place called heaven, and the, with the eternal being, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what's permanent. So world history tells us from the creation of God and the Lord Jesus Christ coming and judging this earth, it has a definite end. History as we know it will cease at some point in the future. Those who trust in Jesus Christ will live forever in a place with God called heaven, but those who don't trust in Jesus Christ will live tormented forever and ever in a place without God called hell. Where will you be when the history ends? As we conclude, Sabi ko sa inyo kanina, simple message, but worth looking at, worth considering at. Especially when we look at eternity. Will it be heaven or will it be hell? God created the heavens and the earth, very foundational. It all starts with God. But we sinned, we rebelled, we wronged God. Whether you believe it or not, it's not relevant anymore. God proclaimed that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if you will just be honest to yourself right now without any influence from any person, look into your heart. Examine yourself. Definitely, you will have an answer. Yes, you have wronged God. Your conscience, you cannot run away. 
from that conviction. You know, deep inside the very deep fabric of your heart, you have wronged God. You have sinned against God. And being a holy God, being a just God requires penalty. And that's the reason why the Lord Jesus Christ came. The illustration, the manifestation of God's love, the very person of the Lord Jesus Christ. But one day he will return, not as a savior, but a judge who will execute his very wrath. So as we conclude, our fifth event is actually today. Today. After seeing the previous four, you are now challenged or you are now, you are now being asked of this question, what do you believe in? Where do you stand right here, right now? What is your stand today? What is your response today? When we look at the past four events, what do you believe in? What is your response? Do you believe that you are a created human being by a perfect and uncreated God? Who, by the way, revealed to us kung paano niya ginawa and the purpose why He created us. It is for His pleasure. It is for His glory. It is to have a fellowship, sweet fellowship with Him that we could enjoy. You were created by the great God Almighty as a created being. You answer to your Creator. Do you believe that? To an authority, to someone who set some rules for our well-being, none other than our God Himself. As a human being, you live under the curse of sin. The wages of sin will and always will be death. You cannot run away to that truth and that declaration from the Bible, from the very word of God, for every one birth equals one death. But the Lord Jesus Christ came for you, my friend. And today you are hearing this message. What is your response right now? May decision kan dapat nagawin doon sa ginawa ng ating Diyos by sending the Lord Jesus Christ. You have that freedom to rebel against God. You have that freedom to sin against God. But you also have that freedom right now to be reconciled with Him by choosing the way of the cross, the method, the way that God provided for you and I to be saved. And that is by repenting and believing, trusting the Lord Jesus Christ, accepting Him in your life as your one and only Lord and Savior. Believing that what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross is sufficient enough to wash away your sins, for you to be forgiven by God, to, for you to be accepted by the holy and righteous God. Jesus went to that cross for you, my friend. He died. That horrible death so that you might be free from the chains of sin. He provides a way, the only way for us, for you and I to be forgiven and be reconciled to our holy God. Now, when everything ends, dumating na sa iyong kamatayan, hindi mo nagawa ito. Darating at darating yung fourth event. Jesus Christ will come back. Not, not, not as a savior anymore but that righteous judge. Yung sword niya, his word will wipe out those who have condemned and rejected him. I hope and pray, consider it right now, my friend. Huwag ka sanang makasama dun sa mga maiiwan. Turn to Jesus Christ today. This is the fifth main event in your history as a human being today. The rest, the, what is the significance of this critical event in world history? Decision. There is a decision to make that will alter your history forever. You can trust in Jesus Christ and be forgiven once and for all. 
and be reconciled to our God and be with Him in our eternity in a place called heaven. Your decision can change your eternal destiny from hell to heaven. The decision is yours today. And for our fellow believers, do you still value the soul of a lost sinner? And would you be willing to be a witness today? Will you be willing to be an ambassador, a minister of reconciliation today? May that be our decisions as Christians. Send this sermon, send this link na ipinapadala sa iyo, kapatid. Every Saturday we have may opportunity ka to share face to face. Read the Word of God. Memorize some verses that you need in sharing the gospel of salvation for a lost soul. May you do that, not tomorrow. You start doing that today. Shall we all pray? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this simple message that we have just pondered upon, heard. It's no surprise, it's no secret in regards to who you are as our Creator. You are our God. You have created us. Thank you for creating us, O oh God. The Bible says we were created in your image. Thank you for our brain. Thank you for our heart. Thank you for our body. Salamat, Panginoon. Binigyan mo kami ng freedom, free will, O oh God. Even to the point of sinning against you. But thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh God, that the fall of men did not come to you as a surprise. An illustration of your love to your creation is that perfect plan that you have so foreordained from the foundation of the world. And that plan is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. It is our prayer to our friends right now that they can come, that they will come to that conclusion, the very reason not just the historical event of the Lord Jesus Christ coming here on earth, but a personal one, a personal reason for our friends that Jesus Christ came here, died on the cross, resurrected the third day for you, our friend, right now, so that your sins will be forgiven by God. It is the, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that can wash away your sins. It is the only sacrifice, perfect sacrifice, that could please the perfect requirement of our God. Kaibigan, nawa ay naintindihan mo na ang event na ito, ang kadahilanan ng Diyos, ang ating Panginoong Jesus, ang kadahilanan ng Kanyang pagbaba. Nawa, we hope and pray that this truth will rebuke your old belief system that you can save yourself by being good, by having religion. May this day be the turning point to you, our friend, right now. May you come to the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Ask Him to forgive you and ask Him to be your Lord and your Savior today. So that when He finally comes back, and mind you, so prophesied, so promised by God that one day He will redeem, He will rapture, He will take His own and bring them home. That's why we preach. That's why somebody is witnessing to you. Maaring nakukulitan ka na sa mga nag-share-share siya because mahal ka ng tao na yon kaibigan. Ayaw niya na mapahama ka sa impyerno. Because when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, that time, he is no longer a savior. He is that judge who will execute his righteous judgment and wrath to this sinful world. Naway kasama ka doon sa mga 
irarapture ng ating Panginoong Hesus at dadalhin doon sa lupang pangako ang kalangitan. And you can be, you can be, my friend, with that critical decision today. You understand that you have wronged God? You understand that you were created for God? Unfortunately, you have wronged Him. You sin against Him. And that separates you from His beautiful and perfect fellowship. You become, you became an enemy of God. You can be reconciled to Him. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in Him that what He did on the cross is the one and only way to heaven. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but through Him alone. Receive Him in your life as your Lord and Savior. And the Bible says you can be saved today. And that is that decision that you can make today. To our fellow brethren, may this also be a challenge to all of us. We act, we respond to the great calling to you and I as Christians. And that is to be a witness to this sinful world, to be the channel of blessing to a lost soul so that they could be saved. And the decision for you and I is not tomorrow, but today. Have you looked at the verses from the Bible wherein you can use for witnessing to a lost soul? You can memorize Romans 3.23, 6.23, 5.8, 10.13. We call that the Romans Road. Enough for you to share the gospel and to bring that person to that realization that he wronged against God, that the penalty of sin is death. But God loved. All of us, He commended His love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord can be saved. Can you, to our fellow brethren, will you be willing to put that in your heart so that anytime God presented upon, upon uh, an opportunity to be a witness, we are ready. John 3.16 is, a, is, a, is enough for us to share the gospel. And that decision, brethren, is not tomorrow, but today. When you receive the link sa ating pong mga sermon, balutin mo ng panalangin and send it. At the end of every sermon is an invitation, an explanation kung paano maliligtas ang ating mga kaibigan. Are you doing that? It should not be tomorrow, but today. Father in heaven, we thank you once again, O Lord, for this simple message that we have heard. And yet, it summarized everything with regards to our existence, with regards to who you are, with regards to who we are in front of you, and what we ought to do as Christians, what an unbelieving person should do right now. May you have been glorified in our midst, Nawa po'y nagligtas ka ng kaluluwa at humamon muli sa buhay ng mga mana ng panataya. We love you, we praise you, we give honor and praise to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we praise, people will say, Amen. Praise be to God. Salamat po once again sa inyong pakikinig. It's my prayer that you have been blessed by the preaching of God's word. And may you also be willing to share the link that every time na nakikita po ninyo sa inyong mga Facebook Messenger or sa Facebook page, just share it to your loved ones, to your friends. Okay, babalik po ang Panginoon at huhusgahan ng mundo na ito. Wala po tayong pinakamahalagang pwedeng gawin kung hindi ang mag-akay ng kaluluwa. Knowing that it's about eternity in heaven or eternity in hell. Nawa po pagpala po kayo ng mensahe sa araw po na ito. And we hope and pray that we can see each other once again, God permits, next week. God bless you all.